So what's up with Cardano, right? Ever since they launched during the last bull run, they had a long, slow, but methodical plan to launch their ambitious platform. And they're supposed to be one of the most promising Ethereum killers. But what's been going on lately? Is it still worth holding your bag or buying some more? Or is it time to sell and move on? This video, I'm gonna break down Cardano and the latest happenings about it. So just sit back, relax, and just keep on watching. Welcome back to Bitcoin for Beginners. I'm your host, Kevin, and in this deep dive video, we're gonna cover Cardano and give you a much needed update that you may be curious about as an existing or potential investor in this project. As always, we will cover this content with no frills nor fluff, and just as full disclosure, I do not personally have any ADA or the Cardano's token, but I'm still interested to dive into the latest because I know this is a popular project. So while you're watching this video, if you like our style and our content, then please subscribe down below and like this video as well. First, a brief overview about Cardano, and I have timestamps below, so if you want to skip ahead because you already know everything there is to know about Cardano, then feel free to do so. So they're a smart contracts platform, right? And that's what makes them an Ethereum competitor. Their token ADA has hovered around the top 10 or 15 of coin market cap, giving it close to a $4 billion market cap at time of shooting. They have an Ouroboros proof of stake algorithm. That's their consensus mechanism. And it's really focused and designed for scalability and interoperability. They have three kind of entities surrounding this project, Emergo, IOHK, and the Cardano Foundation, all working on different parts of the ecosystem. They also have some recent big name partnerships with companies like ScanTrust and also universities around the world. But so far, those are just mostly pilots and research collaborations and nothing full out mass adoption, rolling it out to millions of people per se. As far as I can tell, feel free to correct me down below in the comments if you think I'm mistaken. Their claim to fame or their unique selling point was their peer reviewed blockchain network, right? They took a really academic approach. Everything was built, designed and developed with this academic and scientific rigor. So what is the history and background of Cardano? They developed this idea all the way back from 2015, but they launched with an ICO in 2017 during the last bull market and laid out a multi-year plan to roll it all out. And at the peak of the last bull market, ADA reached an all-time high of $1.33, and it was founded by Charles Hoskinson, co-founder of Ethereum, one of the many at least. IOHK is working on developing Cardano from the technical side, Cardano Foundation is focused on partnerships and agreements and managing stakeholders and the legal entities per se. And Emergo is their for-profit arm focused on building commercial opportunities to integrate Cardano tech into various businesses. Now, what's been released so far, right? Because they've been working on numerous projects in parallel. They also have a really clear roadmap online on the cardano.org that you can take a look at. I took a deep look at that as well. They launched their Dataless wallet pretty early on. This is the IOHK built full node desktop wallet. And some people complain about it, have issues, but it mostly works well for the most part. And it's constantly updated by the team as the network is changed too, like various parameters, connecting to various nodes and staking pools and so forth. In July of this year, Shelly mainnet was finally launched. This was the second phase of the Cardano project, first phase being Byron. Now, this is bringing them to the proof of stake consensus algorithm, and it took several years of development and work from finally a launch this year in 2020. So there's several staking pools already operating smoothly, and people are excited because that means now they can directly participate and earn rewards as well. They also launched Project Catalyst's first public fund recently. This is an experimental treasury system that combines proposals and voting procedures for projects. This is actually fund number two. Fund zero was just testing the technical components. Fund one was kind of like a dress rehearsal per se. And now this fund two has 250,000 worth of ADA dedicated for it. And people in the Cardano space can propose and vote on ideas to improve and grow the project. Now what's next on the roadmap? A lot of stuff, right? There are five clearly defined phases or they call eras with specific features. 
the names are Byron, Shelley, Goguen, Basho, and Voltaire. I really hope I pronounced this correctly. Now, they're working on them in parallel with different dev and research teams. Byron and Shelley have been released so far. Goguen is anticipated for Q1 of 2021, so very soon. And this one is particularly huge because they are creating their virtual machine and making it compatible with Ethereum smart contracts so you can easily migrate over to Cardano as well. This means DeFi is coming to Cardano very soon too. They're also creating Plutus, which is their smart contract development language and execution platform, and it uses the functional programming language called Haskell, which admittedly is kind of obscure. No one really uses Haskell, but there are some benefits that their academic and scientific team chose that for. They're also creating Marlowe, which is a high-level application platform, so that even business people who don't know how to code smart contracts can build apps too. Goguen also enables native tokens like the ERC20 token standard or TRC20 for Tron, and this lets them do NFTs, non-fungible tokens, and fungible tokens as well. Basho is the fourth one. This is for scalability and interoperability. They're going to allow sidechains and also support both UTXO transaction model and account-based model. Finally, Voltaire is the final steps for decentralization. This is where community governance comes into play. They have a treasury and improvement proposal system, and things will no longer be under IOHK active management at that point. Now, what are some criticisms of Cardano, at least recently, right? And feel free to disagree with me as well. This is just what I saw during my research, and some may be more fair than others. First is a common criticism that they lack marketing focus and prowess. They take more of a build it and people will come approach. This is started by academics and scientists after all. They've also had lots of delays with feature releases. Shelly was supposed to come two years ago in 2018, but got delayed a full two years. Now they are committed to tighter deadlines though, so we'll see if they'll be able to hit that. But to be fair, other projects like Ethereum also face these. This seems really par for the course with decentralized projects, not to really move fast and break things like with Silicon Valley startups. There's also the criticism that they still don't have smart contracts yet, so they can't take advantage of the DeFi craze. A big question is why stake ADA if you can get much better yield elsewhere in the crypto space, right? And you need people to want to stake ADA to maintain the network in the proof of stake model. They offer about average annual yield returns compared to other options. They also have way less on-chain transactions than Ethereum or Tron per se. And this is per coin metrics chart. I'm not going to bring up ones like EOS that might have a lot of spammy transactions there. But Ethereum and Tron have around 1 million transactions per day and Cardano has way less. There's also not a lot of development happening on top of the Cardano platform currently. Maybe this will come with later releases. Part of the reason might be because you have to code with Haskell currently, which is a random language that no one uses. Just look at their GitHub activity per se, or that particular language. And maybe their community fund will spur more teams to build on chain. Right now, they have an accelerator called DLab just for projects to build within the Cardano ecosystem. But a lot of them have been building off chain too. Now, Charles Hoskinson, what has he been up to as the founder, right? He's still very active with the project. He posts on Twitter and makes YouTube videos all the time sharing updates about Cardano and their grand plan. He also talks about other stuff too besides Cardano, is actively engaged with the community, answers questions, and is not accused of deserting this project unlike other founders like (coughs) Charlie Lee. Now, what are my final thoughts, right? Definitely not a dead project, but I do think they have an uphill battle compared to other layer ones to deliver on its grand promise. Investment-wise, it's still a solid altcoin if there's any out there. Just keep an eye out for their upcoming releases. And they also have some upcoming random partnerships with like Litecoin integration, cross-chain stuff. Let me know what you think though, down in the comments below about Cardano. Is it a hold? Is it a sell? What do you want to do with it? And what do you think about its prospects during this upcoming bull run? I'm Kevin. I hope you have an amazing rest of your day and I'll catch y'all next time. Yeah.